This is the revelation given by God to Jesus Christ. It was given to him so that he might show his servants what must shortly happen. He made it known by sending his angel to his servant John, who in telling all that he saw has borne witness to the word of God and to the testimony of Jesus Christ. Happy is the man who reads and happy are those who listen to the words of this prophecy and heed what is written in it, for the hour of fulfilment is near. John to the seven churches in the province of Asia, grace be to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, from the seven spirits before his throne and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead and ruler of the kings of earth. To him who loves us and freed us from our sins with his life's blood, who made us a royal house to serve as the priests of his God, and Father, to him be glory and dominion for ever and ever. Amen. Behold, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye shall see him, and among them those who pierced him. And all the peoples of the world shall lament in remorse. So it shall be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Sovereign Lord of all. I, John, your brother, who share with you in the suffering and the sovereignty and the endurance which is ours in Jesus. I was on the island called Patmos because I had preached God's word and borne my testimony to Jesus. It was on the Lord's day, and I was caught up by the Spirit, and behind me I heard a loud voice like the sound of a trumpet, which said to me, Write down what you see on a scroll, and send it to the seven churches, to Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamum, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. And I turned to see whose voice it was that spoke to me. And when I turned, I saw seven standing lamps of gold, and among the lamps one like a son of man, robed down to his feet with a golden girdle around his breast. The hair of his head was white as snow-white wool, and his eyes flamed like fire. His feet gleamed like burnished brass refined in a furnace, and his voice was like the sound of rushing waters. In his right hand he held seven stars, and out of his mouth came a sharp two-edged sword, and his face shone like the sun in full strength. When I saw him I fell at his feet as though dead, but he laid his right hand upon me and said, Do not be afraid, I am the first and the last, I am the living one, for I was dead and now I am alive for evermore, and I hold the keys of death and death's domain. Write down, therefore, what you have seen, what is now, and what will be hereafter. Here is the secret meaning of the seven stars which you saw in my right hand, and of the seven lamps of gold. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven lamps are the seven churches. To the angel of the church at Ephesus write, these are the words of the one who holds the seven stars in his right hand and walks among the seven lamps of gold. I know all your ways, your toil and your fortitude. I know you cannot endure evil men. You have put to the proof those who claim to be apostles but are not, and have found them false. Fortitude you have, and you have borne up in my cause and never flagged. But I have this against you. You have lost your early love. Think from what a height you have fallen. Repent and do as you once did. Otherwise, if you do not repent, I shall come to you and remove your lamp from its place. Yet you have this in your favour. You hate the practices of the Nicolotins, as I do. Here you have, here who, hear you who have ears to hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who is victorious, I will give the right to eat from the tree of life 
that stands in the garden of God. Then I watched as the Lamb broke the first of the seven seals, and I heard one of the four living creatures say in a voice like thunder, Come, and there before my eyes was a white horse, and its rider held a bow. He was given a crown, and he rode forth, conquering and to conquer. The first blew his trumpet, and there came hail and fire mingled with blood, and this was hurled upon the earth. A third of the earth was burnt, a third of the trees were burnt, and all of the green grass was burnt. Then from the sanctuary I heard a loud voice, and it said to the seven angels, Go and pour out the seven bowls of God's wrath on the earth. So the first angel went out and poured his bowl on the earth, and foul malignant sores appeared on those men that wore the mark of the beast and worshipped its image. After this I looked, and there before my eyes was a door opened in heaven, and the voice that I had first heard speaking to me like a trumpet said, Come up here and I will show you what must happen hereafter. At once I was caught up by the Spirit, there in heaven stood a throne, and on the throne sat one whose appearance was like the gleam of jasper and cornelian, and round the throne was a rainbow, bright as an emerald. In a circle about this throne were twenty-four other thrones, and on them sat twenty-four elders, robed in white and wearing crowns of gold, from the throne went out flashes of lightning and peals of thunder. Burning before the throne were seven flaming torches, the seven spirits of God. And in front of it stretched what seemed like a sea of glass, like a sheet of ice. In the centre, round the throne itself, were four living creatures, covered with eyes in front and behind. The first creature was like a lion, the second like an ox. The third had a human face. The fourth was like an eagle in flight. The four living creatures, each of them with six wings, had eyes all over, inside and out, and by day and by night, without a pause, they sang, Holy, holy, holy is God the sovereign Lord of all, who was and is and is to come. As often as the living creatures give glory and honour and thanks to the one who sits on the throne, who lives for ever and ever, the twenty-four elders fall down before the one who sits on the throne and worship him who lives for ever and ever, and as they lay their crowns before the throne they cry, Thou art worthy, O Lord our God, to receive glory and honour and power, because Thou didst create all things. By Thy will they were created and have their being. When I saw in the right hand, then I saw in the right hand of the one who sat on the throne a scroll, with writing inside and out, and it was sealed up with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel proclaim in a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the scroll and to break its seals? There was no one in heaven or earth or under the earth able to open the scroll or look inside it. I was in tears because no one was found who was worthy to open the scroll or look inside it. But one of the elders said to me, Do not weep, for the lion from the tribe of Judah, the scion of David, has won the right to open the scroll and to break this, its seven seals. Then I saw standing in the very middle of the throne, inside the circle of living creatures and the circle of elders, a lamb with the marks of slaughter upon him. He had seven horns and seven eyes, the eyes which are the seven spirits of God sent out all over the world. And the Lamb went up and took the scroll from the right hand of the one who sat on the throne. And when he took it, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the Lamb. Each of the elders had a harp, 
and they held golden bowls full of incense, the prayers of God's people, and they were singing a new song. Thou art worthy to take the scroll and to break its seals, for thou wast slain by thy blood, didst purchase for God men of every tribe and language, people and nation. Thou hast made of them a royal house to serve our God as priests, and they shall reign upon earth. Then as I looked, I heard voices of countless angels. These were all around the throne, and the living creatures and the elders. Myriads upon myriads there were, thousands upon thousands, and they cried aloud, Worthy, worthy is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain, to receive all power and wealth, wisdom and might, honour and glory and praise. Then I heard every created thing in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea, all that is in them, crying, Praise and honour, glory and might to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb for ever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Amen, and the elders fell down and worshipped. To the angel of the church at Smyrna write, these are the words of the first and the last, who was dead and came to life again. I know how hard pressed you are, and poor, and yet you are rich. I know how you are slandered by those who claim to be Jews but are not. They are Satan's synagogue. Do not be afraid of the suffering to come. The devil will throw some of you into prison, to put you to the test, and for ten days you will suffer cruelly. Only be faithful till death, and I will give you the crown of life. Hear, you who have ears to hear, what the Spirit says to the churches. He who is victorious cannot be harmed by the second death. When the Lamb broke the second seal, I heard the second creature say, Come. And out came another horse, all red. To its rider was given power to take peace from the earth, and make men slaughter one another. And he was given a great sword. The second angel blew his trumpet and what looked like a great blazing mountain was hurled into the sea. A third of the sea was turned to blood, a third of the living creatures in it died, and a third of the ships on it foundered. The second angel poured his bowl on the sea, and it turned to blood like the blood from a corpse, and everything Every living thing in the sea died. After this I saw four angels stationed at the four corners of the earth, holding back the four winds so that no wind should blow on sea or land or on any tree. Then I saw another angel out, rising out of the east, carrying the seal of the living God, and he called aloud to the four angels who had been given the power to ravage land and sea. Do no damage to sea or land or trees until we have set the seal of our God upon the foreheads of his servants. And I heard the number of those who had received the seal. From all the tribes of Israel there were 144,000, 12,000 from the tribe of Judah, 12,000 from the tribe of Reuben, 12,000 from the tribe of Gad, 12,000 from the tribe of Asher, 12,000 from the tribe of Naphtali, 12,000 from the tribe of Manasseh, 12,000 from the tribe of Simeon, 12,000 from the tribe of Levi, 12,000 from the tribe of Issachar, 12,000 from the tribe of Zebulun, 12,000 from the tribe of Joseph, and 12,000 from the tribe of Benjamin. After this I looked and saw a vast throng, which no one could count, from every nation, of all tribes, peoples and languages, standing in front of the throne and before the Lamb. They were robed in white and had palms in their hands, and they shouted together, Victory to our God! 
who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood round the throne and the elders and the four living creatures and they all fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God crying, Amen, praise and glory and wisdom, thanksgiving and honour, power and might be to our God for ever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders turned to me and said, These men that are robed in white, who are they, and where from, and from where do they come? But I answered, My Lord, you know, you know, not I. Then he said to me, These are the men who have passed through the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. That is why they stand before the throne of God and minister to him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will dwell with them. They shall never again feel hunger or thirst. The sun shall not beat on them, nor any scorching heat, because the Lamb who is at the heart of the throne will be their shepherd and will guide them to the spirits of the water of life, guide them to the springs of the water of life and God will wipe all tears from their eyes. Then I saw another mighty angel coming down from heaven. He was wrapped in cloud with the rainbow round his head. His face shone like the sun and his legs were like pillars of fire. In his hand he held a little scroll unrolled. His right foot he planted on the sea and his left on the land. Then he gave a great shout like a roar of a lion. And when he shouted, the seven thunders spoke. I was about to write down what the seven thunders had said, but I heard a voice from heaven saying, Seal up what the seven thunders have said. Do not write it down. Then the angel that I saw standing on the sea and the land raised his right hand to heaven and swore by him who lives for ever and ever, who created heaven and earth and the sea and everything in them. There shall be no more delay. But when the time comes for the seventh angel to sound his trumpet, the hidden purpose of God will have been fulfilled. And as he promised to his servants the prophets, then the voice which I heard from heaven was speaking to me again, and it said, Go and take the open scroll in the hand of the angel that stands on the sea and the land. So I went to the angel and asked him to give me the little scroll. He said to me, Take it and eat it. It will turn your stomach sour, although in your mouth it will taste sweet as honey. So I took the little scroll from the angel's hand and ate it, and in my mouth it did taste sweet as honey, but when I swallowed it my stomach turned sour. Then they said to me, Once again you must utter prophecies over peoples and nations and languages and many kings. To the angel of the church at Pergamum write, These are the words of the one who has the sharp two-edged sword. I know where you live. It is the place where Satan has his throne. And yet you are holding fast to my cause. You did not deny your faith in me, even at the time when Antipas, my faithful witness, was killed in your city, the home of Satan. But I have a few matters to bring against you. You have in Pergamum some that hold to the teaching of Balaam, who taught Balak to put temptation in the way of the Israelites. He encouraged them to eat food sacrificed to idols and to commit fornication. And in the same way you also have some who hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. So repent. If you do not, I shall come to you soon and make war upon them with the sword that comes out of my mouth. Hear, you who have ears to hear, what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who is victorious, I will give some of the hidden manna. I will give him also a white stone, and on the stone will be written a new name, known to none but him that receives it. When he broke the third seal, I heard the third creature say, 
come, and there as I looked was a black horse, and its rider held in his hand a pair of scales, and I heard what sounded like a voice from the midst of the living creatures, which said, A whole day's wage for a quart of flour, a whole day's wage for three quarts of barley meal, but spare the olive and the vine. The third angel blew his trumpet, and a great star shot from the sky, flaming like a torch, and it fell on a third of the rivers and springs. The name of the star was Wormwood, and a third of the water turned to Wormwood, and men in great numbers died of the water because it had been poisoned. The third angel poured his bowl on the rivers and springs, and they turned to blood. Then I heard the angel of the waters say, Just art thou in these thy judgments, thou holy one, who art and wast, for they shed the blood of thy people and of thy prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink. They have their deserts. And I heard the altar cry, Yes, Lord God, Sovereign over all, true and just are thy judgments. I was given a long cane, a kind of measuring rod, and told, Now go and measure the temple of God, the altar, and the number of the worshippers. But have nothing to do with the outer court of the temple. Do not measure that, for it has been given over to the Gentiles and they will trample the holy city underfoot for forty-two months. And I have two witnesses, whom I will appoint to prophecy, dressed in sackcloth, all, those, all through those twelve hundred and sixty days. These are the two olive trees and the two lamps that stand in the presence of the Lord of the earth. If anyone seeks to do them harm, fire pours from their mouths and consumes their enemies and thus shall the man die who seeks to do them harm. These two have the power to shut up the sky, so that no rain may fall during the time of their prophesying, and they have the power to turn water to blood, and to strike the earth at will, with every kind of plague. But when they have completed their testimony, the beast that comes up from the abyss will wage war upon them, and will defeat and kill them. Their corpses will lie in the street of the great city, whose name in allegory is Sodom, or Egypt, um, where also their Lord was crucified. For three days and a half, men from every people and tribe of every language and nation gaze upon their corpses and refuse them burial. All men on earth gloat over them, make merry, and exchange presents. For these two prophets were a torment to the whole earth, but at the end of the three days and a half the breath of life from God came into them, and they stood up on their feet to the terror of all who saw it. Then a loud voice was heard speaking to them from heaven, which said, Come up here, and they went up to heaven in a cloud, in full view of their enemies. At that same moment there was a violent earthquake, and a tenth of the city fell. Seven thousand people were killed in the earthquake. The rest in terror did homage to the God of heaven. The second woe has now passed, but the third is soon to come. Next appeared a great portent in heaven, a woman robed with the sun, beneath her feet the moon, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. She was pregnant, and in the anguish of her labour she cried out to be delivered. Then a second portent appeared in heaven, a great red dragon with seven heads and ten horns. On his heads were seven diadems, and with his tail he swept down a third of the stars in the sky and flung them to the earth. The dragon stood in front of the woman who was about to give birth, so that when her child was born he might devour it. She gave birth to a male child, who is destined to rule all nations with an iron rod. But her child was snatched up to God and his throne, and the woman herself fled into the wilds, 
where she had a place prepared for her by God, there to be sustained for twelve hundred and sixty days. Then war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels waged war upon the dragon. The dragon and his angels fought, but they had not the strength to win, and no foothold was left them in heaven. So the great dragon was thrown down, that serpent of old that led the whole world astray, whose name is Satan, or the devil, thrown down to the earth and his angels with him. Then I heard a voice in heaven proclaiming aloud, This is the hour of victory for our God, the hour of his sovereignty and power, when his Christ comes to his rightful rule. For the accuser of our brothers is overthrown, who day and night accused them before our God, by the sacrifice of the Lamb they have conquered him, and by the testimony which they uttered, for they did not hold their lives too dear to lay them down. Rejoice then, you heavens, and you that dwell in them, but woe to you, earth and sea, for the devil has come down to you in great fury, knowing that his time is short. When the dragon found that he had been thrown down to the earth, he went in pursuit of the woman who had given birth to the male child, but the woman was given two great eagles' wings to fly to the place in the wilds where for three years and a half she was to be sustained, out of reach of the serpent. From his mouth the serpent spewed a flood of water after the woman to sweep her away with his spate, but the earth came to her rescue and opened its mouth and swallowed the river which the dragon spewed from his mouth. At this the dragon grew furious with the woman, and went off to wage war on the rest of her offspring, that is, on those who keep God's commandments and maintain their testimony to Jesus. He took his stand on the seashore. To the angel of the church at Theatira write, These are the words of the Son of God, whose eyes flame like fire, and whose feet gleamed like burnished brass. I know all your ways, your love and faithfulness, your good service and your fortitude, and of late you have done better than at first. Yet I have this against you. You tolerate that Jezebel, the woman who claims to be a prophetess, who by her teaching lures my servants into fornication and into eating food sacrificed to idols. I have given her time to repent, but she refuses to repent of her fornication, so I will throw her onto a bed of pain and plunge her lovers into terrible suffering, unless they forswear what she is doing, and her children I will strike dead. This will teach all the churches that I am the searcher of men's hearts and thoughts, and that I will reward each one of you according to his deeds. And now I speak to you, others in Theatira, who do not accept this teaching and have no ex experience of what they like to call the deep secrets of Satan. On you I will impose no further burden, only hold fast to what you have until I come. To him who is victorious, to him who perseveres in doing my will to the end, I will give authority over the nations, that same authority which I received from my father, and he shall rule them with an iron rod, smashing them to bits like earthenware, and I will give him also the star of dawn. Hear you who have ears to hear what the Spirit says to the churches. When he broke the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth creature say, Come, and there, as I looked, was another horse, sickly pale, and its rider's name was Death, and Hades came close behind. To him was given power over a quarter of the earth, with the right to kill by sword, and by famine, by pestilence, and wild beasts. The fourth angel blew his trumpet, 
and a third part of the sun was struck, a third of the moon, and a third of the stars, so that the third part went dark, and a third of the light of the day failed, and of the night. Then I looked, and I heard an eagle calling with a loud cry as it flew into mid-heaven. Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth when the trumpets sound, which the three last angels must now blow. The fourth angel poured his bowl on the sun, and it was allowed to burn men with its flames. They were fearfully burned, but they only cursed the name of God, who had the power to inflict such plagues, and they refused to repent or do him homage. Then out of the sea I saw a beast rising. It had ten horns and seven heads. On its horns were ten diadems, and on each head a blasphemous name. The beast I saw was like a leopard, but its feet were like a bear's, and its mouth like a lion's mouth. The dragon conferred upon it his power and rule, and great authority. One of its heads appeared to have received a death blow, but the mortal wound was healed. The whole world went after the beast in wandering admiration. Men worshipped the dragon because he had conferred his authority upon the beast. They worshipped the beast also, and chanted, Who is like the beast? Who can fight against it? The beast was allowed to mouth bombast and blasphemy, and was given the right to reign for forty-two months. It opened its mouth in blasphemy against God, reviling his name and his heavenly dwelling. It was also allowed to wage war on God's people and to defeat them, and was granted authority over every tribe and people, language and nation. All on earth will worship it, except those whose names the Lamb that was slain keeps in his role of the living, written there since the world was made. Hear, you who have ears to hear, Whoever is to be made a prisoner, a prisoner he shall be. Whoever takes the sword to kill, by the sword he is bound to be killed. This is where the fortitude and faithfulness of God's people have their place. Then I saw another beast, which came up out of the earth. It had two horns like a lamb's, but spoke like a dragon. It wielded all the authority of the first beast in its presence and made the earth and its inhabitants worship this first beast, whose mortal wound had been healed. It worked great miracles, even making fire come down from heaven to earth before men's eyes. By the miracles it was allowed to perform in the presence of the beast, it deluded the inhabitants of the earth, and made them erect an image in honour of the beast that had been wounded by the sword and yet lived. It was allowed to give breath to the image of the beast, so that it could speak, and could cause all who would not worship the image to be put to death. Moreover, it caused everyone great and small, rich and poor, slave and free, to be branded with a mark on his right hand or forehead, and no one was allowed to buy or sell unless he bore the beast's mark, either name or number. Here is the key and anyone who has intelligence may work out the number of the beast. The number represents a man's name, and the numerical val value of its letters is 666. <laughs> then I looked, and on Mount Zion stood the Lamb, and with him were 144,000, who had the name and the name of his father written on their foreheads. I heard a sound from heaven, like the noise of rushing water and the deep roar of thunder. It was the sound of harpers playing their harps. There before the throne and the four living creatures and the elders, they were singing a new song, that song no one could learn except the 144,000 who alone from the whole world had been ransomed. These are men who did not defile themselves with women, for they have kept themselves chaste, and they follow the Lamb wherever he goes, they have been ransomed as the first fruits of humanity for God and the Lamb. No lie was found in their lips. 
they are faultless. To the angel of the church at Sardis, write. These are the words of the one who holds the seven spirits of God, the seven stars. I know all your ways, that though you have a name for being alive, you are dead. Wake up and put some strength into what is left, which must otherwise die. For I have not found any work of yours completed in the eyes of my God. So remember the teaching you received, observe it and repent. If you do not wake up, I shall come upon you like a thief, and you will not know the moment of my coming. Yet you have a few persons in Sardis who have not polluted their clothing. They shall walk with me in white, for so they deserve. He who is victorious shall thus be robed all in white. His name I will never strike off the roll of the living, for in the presence of my Father and his angels I will acknowledge him as mine. Hear, you who have ears to hear, what the Spirit says to the churches. When he broke the fifth seal, I saw underneath the altar the souls of those who had been slaughtered for God's word and for the testimony they bore. They gave a great cry, How long, Sovereign Lord, holy and true, must it be before thou wilt vindicate us and avenge our blood on the inhabitants of the earth? Each of them was given a white robe, and they were told to rest a little while longer, until the tally should be complete of all their brothers in Christ's service who were to be killed as they had been. Then the fifth angel blew his trumpet, and I saw a star that had fallen from heaven to earth, and the star was given the key of the shaft of the abyss. With this he opened the shaft, of the shaft of the abyss, and from the shaft smoke rose, like smoke from a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by the smoke from the shaft. Then over the earth, out of the smoke, came locusts, and they were given the powers that earthly scorpions have. They were told to do no injury to the grass, or to any plant or tree, but only to those men who had not received the seal of God on their foreheads. These they were allowed to torment for five months, with torment like a scorpion's sting, but they were not to kill them. During that time these men will seek death, but they will not find it. They will long to die, but death will elude them. In appearance the locusts were like horses equipped for battle, on their heads were what looked like golden crowns. Their faces were like human faces, and their hair like women's hair. They had teeth like lion's teeth, and wore breastplates like iron. The sound of their wings was like the noise of horses and chariots rushing to battle. They had tails like scorpions with stings on them, and in their tails lay their power to plague mankind for five months. They had for their king the angel of the abyss, whose name in Hebrew is Abaddon, and in Greek Apollyon, or the destroyer. The first woe has now passed, but there are still two more to come. The fifth angel poured his bowl on the throne of the beast, and its kingdom was plunged into darkness. Men gnawed their tongues in agony, but they only cursed the God of heaven for their sores and pains, and would not repent of what they had done. Then I saw an angel flying in mid-heaven, with an eternal gospel to proclaim to those on earth, to every nation and tribe, language and people. He cried in a loud voice, Fear God and pay him homage, for the hour of his judgment has come. Worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea and the water springs. Then another angel, a second, followed and he cried, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the great. 
She who has made all nations drink the fierce wine of her fornication. Yet a third angel followed, crying out loud, Whoever worships the beast in its image and receives it mar its mark on his forehead or hand, he shall drink the wine of God's wrath, poured undiluted into the cup of his vengeance. He shall be tormented in sulfurous flames before the holy angels and before the Lamb. The smoke of their torment will rise for ever and ever, and there will be no respite day or night for those who worship the beast and its image or receive the mark of its name. This is where the fortitude of God's people has its place, in keeping God's commands and remaining loyal to Jesus. Moreover, I heard a voice from heaven saying, Write this, Happy are the dead who die in the faith of Christ henceforth, says the Spirit. They may rest from their labours, for they take, them, take with them the record of their deeds. Then as I looked there appeared a white cloud, and on the cloud sat one like a son of man. He had on his head a crown of gold, and in his hand a sharp sickle. Another angel came out of the temple and called in a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, Stretch out your sickle and reap, for harvest time has come. The earth's crop is overripe. So he who sat on the cloud put his sickle to the earth, and its harvest was reaped. Then another angel came out of the heavenly temple, and he also had a sharp sickle. Then from the altar came yet another, the angel who has authority over fire, and he shouted to the one with the sharp sickle, Stretch out your sickle, and gather in earth's grape harvest, for the clusters are ripe. So the angel put his sickle to the earth and gathered in its grapes, and threw them into the great winepress of God's wrath. The winepress was trodden outside of the city, and for two hundred miles around blood flowed from the press to the height of the horse's bridle. Then I saw another great and astonishing portent in heaven, seven angels with the seven plagues, the last plagues of all, for with them the wrath of God is consummated. I saw what seemed a sea of glass shot with fire, and beside the sea of glass, holding the harps which God had given them, were those who had won the victory over the beast in its image and the number of its name. They were the sing in the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb as they chanted. Great and marvellous are thy deeds, O Lord God, sovereign over all, just and true are thy ways, thou King of the ages. Who shall not revere thee, Lord, and do thy, and do homage to thy name? For thou alone art holy. All nations shall come and worship in thy presence, for thy just dealings stand revealed. After this I looked, the sanctuary of the heavenly tent of testimony was thrown open, and out of it came the seven angels with the seven plagues, and they were robed in fine linen, clean and shining, and had golden girdles around their breasts. Then one of the four living creatures gave the seven angels seven golden bowls full of the wrath of God, who lives for ever and ever. And the sanctuary was filled with smoke from the glory of God and his power, so that no one could enter it until the seven plagues of the seven angels were completed. are the words to the angel of the church at Philadelphia write these are the words of the holy one the true one who holds the key of David when he opens none may shut when he shuts none may open I know all your ways and look I have set before you an open door which no one can shut your strength I know is small yet you have observed my commands and have not disowned my name so this is what I will do. I will make those of Satan's synagogue who claim to be Jews but are lying frauds come and fall down at your feet, and they shall know that you are my beloved people, because you have kept my command and stood fast. I will also keep you from the ordeal that is to fall upon the whole world and test its inhabitants. I am coming soon. Hold fast what you have, 
and let no one rob you of your crown. He who is victorious, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God. He shall never leave it, and I will write the name of my God upon him, and the name of the city of my God, that new Jerusalem, which is coming down out of heaven from my God, and my own new name. Hear you who have ears to hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Then I watched as he broke the sixth seal, and there was a violent earthquake. The sun turned black as a funeral pearl, and the moon all red as blood. The stars in the sky fell to the earth, like figs shaken down by a gale. The sky vanished as a scroll is rolled up, and every mountain and island was moved from its place. Then the kings of the earth, Magnets and marshals, the rich and the powerful, and all men, slave or free, hid themselves in caves and mountain crags. And they called out to the mountains and crags, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of the one who sits on the throne, and from the vengeance of the Lamb. For the great day of their vengeance has come, and who will be able to stand? The sixth angel then blew his trumpet, and I heard a voice coming from between the horns of the golden altar that stood in the presence of God. It said to the sixth angel, who held the trumpet, Release the four angels hailed bound at the great river Euphrates. So the four angels were let loose to kill a third of mankind. They had been held ready for this moment, for this very year and month and day and hour. And their squadrons of cavalry, whose count I heard numbered two hundred million. This was how I saw the horses and their riders in my vision. They wore breastplates, fiery red, blue and sulphur yellow. The horses had heads like lions' heads, and out of their mouths came fire, smoke and sulphur. By these three plagues, that is, by the fire, the smoke and the sulphur that came from their mouths, a third of mankind was killed. The power of the horses lay in their mouths and in their tails also, for their tails were like snakes with heads, and with them too dealt injuries. The rest of mankind who survived these plagues still did not abjure the gods their hands had fashioned, nor cease their worship of devils and of idols made from gold, silver, bronze, stone and wood, which cannot see, hear or walk, nor did they repent of their murders, their sorcery, their fornification, or their robberies. The sixth angel poured his bowl on the great river Euphrates, and its water was dried up to prepare the way for the kings from the east. Then I saw coming from the mouth of the dragon the mouth of the beast, and the mouth of the false prophet, three foul spirit-like frogs. These spirits were devils, with power to work miracles. They were sent out to muster all the kings of the world for the great day of battle of God, the Sovereign Lord. That is the day when I come like a thief. Happy the man who stays awake and keeps on his clothes, so that he will not have to go naked and ashamed for all to see. So they assembled the kings at the place called in Hebrew Armageddon. Then one of the seven angels that held the seven bowls came and spoke to me and said, Come, and I will show you the judgment on the great hall, enthroned above the ocean. The kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and on the wine of her fornication men all over the world have made themselves drunk. In the spirit he carried me away into the wilds, and there I saw a woman mounted on a scarlet beast, which was covered with blasphemous names, and had seven heads and ten horns. The woman was clothed in purple and scarlet, and bedizened with gold and jewels and pearls. In her hand she held a gold cup, full of obscenities, 
and the foulness of her fornication, and written on her forehead was a name with a secret meaning. Babylon the Great, the mother of whores and of every obscenity on earth, the woman I saw was drunk with the blood of God's people and with the blood of those who had borne their testimony to Jesus. As I looked at her, I was greatly astonished, but the angel said to me, Why are you so astonished? I will tell you the secret of the woman and of the beast she rides, with the seven heads and the ten horns. The beast you have seen is he who once was alive and is alive no longer, but has yet to ascend out of the abyss before going to perdition. Those on earth whose names have not been inscribed in the role of the living ever since the world was made will all be astonished to see the beast, for he once was alive and is alive no longer and has still to appear. But here is the clue for those who can interpret it. The seven heads are seven hills on which the woman sits. They represent also seven kings, of whom five have already fallen. One is now reigning and the other is yet to come. And when he does come, he is only to last for a little while. As for the beast that once was alive and alive no longer, he is an eighth, and yet he is one of the seven, and he is going to perdition. The ten horns you saw are the ten kings who have not yet begun to reign, but who for one hour are to share with the beast the exercise of royal authority, for they have but a single purpose among them, and will confer their power and authority upon the beast. They will wage war upon the Lamb. But the Lamb will defeat them, for he is Lord of Lords and King of Kings, and his victory will be shared by his followers, called and chosen and faithful. Then he said to me, The ocean you saw where the great horse sat is an ocean of peoples and populations, nations and languages. As for the ten horns you saw, they together with the beast will come to hate the whore. They will strip her naked and leave her desolate. They will batten on her flesh and burn her to ashes. For God has put it into their heads to carry out this purpose by making common cause and confirm, conferring their sovereignty upon the beast until all that God has spoken is fulfilled. The woman you saw is the great city that holds sway over the kings of the earth. After this I saw another angel coming down from heaven. He came with great authority and the earth was lit up with his splendour. Then in a mighty voice he proclaimed, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the great. She has become a dwelling for demons, a haunt for every unclean spirit, for every vile and lonesome bird. For all nations have drunk deep of the fierce wine of her fornication. The kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and merchants the world all over have grown rich on her bloated wealth. Then I heard another voice from heaven that said, Come out of her, my people, lest you take part in her sins and share in her plagues, for her sins are piled high as heaven, and God has not forgotten her crimes. Pay her back in your own coin, repay her twice over for her deeds. Double for her the strength of the potion she mixed, Meet out grief and torment to match her voluptuous pomp. She says in her heart, I am queen on my throne. No mourning for me, no widow's weeds. Because of this, her plague shall strike her in a single day. Pestilence, bereavement, famine and burning. For mighty is the Lord God who has pronounced her doom. The kings of the earth who committed fornication with her and wallowed in her luxury will weep and wail over her, as they see the smoke of her conflagration. They will stand at a distance, for horror at her torment, and will say, Alas, alas, for the great city, the mighty city of Babylon, in a single hour your doom has struck. The merchants of the earth will also weep and mourn for her, because no one any longer buys her their cargoes, cargoes of gold and silver, jewels and pearls, clothes of purple and scarlet, silks and fine linings, all kinds of scented woods, ivories and every sort of thing made of costly woods, bronze, iron or marble, cinnamon and spice, 
incense, perfumes and frankincense, wine, oil, flour and wheat, sheep and cattle, horses, chariots, slaves, and the lives of men, the fruit you longed for. They will say, is gone from you. All the glitter and glamour are lost, never to be yours again. The traders in all these wares who gained their wealth from her will stand at a distance from horror at her torment, weeping and mourning and saying, Alas, alas, for the great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet, bedizened with gold and jewels and pearls. Alas, that in one hour so much wealth should be laid waste. Then all the sea captains and voyagers, the sailors and those who traded by sea, stood at a distance and cried out as they saw the smoke of her conflagration. Was there ever a city like the great city? They threw dust on their heads, weeping and mourning and saying, Alas, alas, for the great city, where all who had their ships at sea grew rich on her wealth. Alas, that in a single hour she should be laid waste. But let heaven exult over her, exult, apostles and prophets and people of God, for in the judgment against her has vindicated your cause. Then a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and hurled it into the sea and said, Thus shall be Babylon, the great city, be sent hurtling down, never to be seen again. No more shall the sound of harpers and minstrels, of flute players and of trumpeters be heard in you. No more shall craftsmen of any trade be found in you. No more shall the sound of the mill be heard in you. No more shall the light of the lamp be seen in you. No more shall the voice of the bride and bridegroom be heard in you. Your traders were once the merchant princes of the world, and with your sorcery you deceived all the nations. For the blood of the prophets and of God's people was found in her, the blood of all who had been done to death on earth. To the angel of the church at Laodicea write, These are the words of the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the prime source of all God's creation. I know all your ways. You are neither hot nor cold. How I wish you were either hot or cold. But because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. You say, how rich am I? How well I have done. I have everything I want. In fact, though you do not know it, you are the most pitifully wretch, poor, blind and naked. So I advise you to buy from me gold refined in the fire to make you truly rich and white clothes to put on to hide the shame of your nakedness and ointment for your eyes so that you may see. All whom I love I reproach and discipline. Be on your mettle therefore and repent. Here I stand knocking at the door. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door I will come in and sit down to supper with him and he with me. To him who is victorious, I will grant a place on my throne, as I myself was victorious and sat down with my father on his throne. Hear, you who have ears to hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Now when the Lamb broke the seventh seal, there was a silence in heaven for what seemed half an hour. Then I looked, and the seven angels that stand in the presence of God were given seven trumpets. Then another angel came and stood at the altar, holding a golden censer, and he was given a great quantity of incense to offer with the prayers of all God's people upon the golden altar in front of the throne. And from the angel's hand the smoke of the incense went up before God with the prayers of his people. Then the angel took the censer, filled it from the altar fire, and threw it down upon the earth, and there were peals of thunder, lightning, and an earthquake. Then the seventh angel blew his trumpet, and voices were heard in heaven shouting, The sovereignty of the world has passed to our Lord and his Christ, 
and he shall reign for ever and ever. And the twenty-four elders seated on their thrones before God fell on their faces and worshipped God, saying, We give thee thanks, O Lord God, sovereign over all, who art and who wast, because thou hast taken thy great power into thy hands and entered upon thy reign. The nations raged, but thy day of retribution has come. Now is the time for the dead to be judged. Now is the time for recompense to thy servants, the prophets, to thy dedicated people, and all who honour thy name, both great and small, the time to destroy those who destroy the earth. Then God's temple in heaven was laid open, and within the temple was seen the Ark of the Covenant. There came flashes of lightning and peals of thunder, an earthquake and a storm of hail. Then the seventh angel poured his bowl into the air, and out of the sanctuary came a loud voice from the throne which said, It is over! And there followed flashes of lightning and peals of thunder and a violent earthquake, like none before it in human history. So violent it was, the great city was split in three. The cities of the world fell in ruin, and God did not forget Babylon the great, but made her drink the cup which was filled with the fierce wine of his vengeance. Every island vanished, there was not a mountain to be seen. Huge hailstones, weighing perhaps a hundred weight, fell on men from the sky, and they cursed God for the plague of hail, because that plague was so severe. After this I heard what sounded like the roar of a vast throng in heaven, and they were shouting, Alleluia! Victory and glory and power belong to our God, for true and just are his judgments. He was condemned the great whore, who corrupted the earth with her fornication, and has avenged upon her the blood of his servants. Then once more they shouted, Alleluia! The smoke goes up from her for ever and ever. And the twenty-four elders and the four living creatures fell down and worshipped God as he sat on the throne, and they too cried, Amen! Alleluia! Then a voice came from the throne which said, Praise our God, all you his servants, you that fear him, both great and small. Again I heard what sounded like a vast crowd, like the noise of rushing water and deep roars of thunder, and they cried, Alleluia! The Lord our God, sovereign over all, has entered on his reign. Exult and shout for joy and do him homage, for the wedding day of the Lamb has come. His bride has made herself ready, and for her dress she has been given fine linen, clean and shining. Now the fine linen signifies the righteous deeds of God's people. Then the angel said this, Write this, Happy are those who are invited to the wedding supper of the Lamb. And he added, These are the very words of God. At this I fell at his feet to worship him. But he said to me, No, not that. I am but a fellow servant with you and your brothers who bear their testimony to Jesus. It is God you must worship. Those who bear testimony to Jesus are inspired like the prophets. Then I saw heaven wide open and there before me was a white horse and its rider's name was faithful and true for he is just in judgment and just in war his eyes flamed like fire and on his head were many diadems written upon him was a name known to none but himself and he was robed in a garment drenched in blood he was called the word of god and the armies of heaven followed him on white horses clothed in fine linen, clean and shining. From his mouth there went a sharp sword, with which to smite the nations, for he it is who shall rule them with an iron rod, and tread the winepress of the wrath and retribution of God the Sovereign Lord. And on his robe and on his thigh there were written the name, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Then I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried aloud to all the birds flying in mid-heaven, Come and gather for God's great supper, 
to eat the flesh of kings and commanders and fighting men, the flesh of horses and their riders, the flesh of all men, slave and free, great and small. Then I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies mustered to do battle with the rider and his army. The beast was taken prisoner, and so was the false prophet who had worked miracles in its presence and deluded those who had received the mark of the beast and worshipped its image. The two of them were thrown alive into the lake of fire with its sulfurous flames. The rest were killed by the sword which went out of the rider's mouth and all the birds gorged themselves on their flesh. Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven with the key of the abyss, and a great chain in his hands. He seized the dragon, that serpent of old, the devil or Satan, and chained him up for a thousand years. He threw him into the abyss, shutting and sealing it over him, so that he might seduce the nations no more till the thousand years were over. After that he must be let loose a short while. Then I saw thrones, and upon them sat those, sat those to whom judgment was committed. I could see the souls of those who had been beheaded for the sake of God's word, and their testimony to Jesus. Those who had not worshipped the beast and its image, or received its mark on forehead or hand, these came to life again, and reigned with Christ for a thousand years though the rest of the dead did not come to life until the thousand years were over. This is the first resurrection. Happy indeed, and one of God's own people is the man who shares in this first resurrection. Upon such a second death has no claim. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him for the thousand years. When the thousand years are over, Satan will be let loose from his dungeon, and he will come to seduce the nations in the four quarters of the earth, and to muster them for battle. Yes, the hosts of Gog and Magog, countless as the sands of the sea, so they marched over the breadth of the land and laid siege to the camp of God's people, and the city that he loves. But the fire came down on them from heaven and consumed them, and the devil and their seducer was flung into the lake of fire and sulphur, where the beast and false prophet have been flung, there to be tormented day and night for ever. Then I saw a great white throne, and the one who sat upon it, from his presence earth and heaven vanished away, and no place was left for them. I could see the dead, great and small, standing before the throne, and books were opened. Then another book was opened, the roll of the living, from what was written in these books, the dead were judged upon the record of their deeds. The sea gave up its dead, and death and Hades gave up their dead in their keeping. They were judged, each man on the record of his deeds. Then death and Hades were flung into the lake of fire. This lake of fire is the second death, and into it were flung any whose names were not to be found in the role of the living. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven, the first earth, had vanished, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of the heaven from God, made ready like a bride adorned for her husband. I heard a loud voice proclaiming from the throne, Now at last God has his dwelling among men. He will dwell among them, and shall be with his people. And God himself will be with them. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be an end to the death, and to mourning and crying and pain, for the old order has passed away. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. And he said to me, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. Indeed, they are already fulfilled. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. A draught from the water springs of life will be my free gift to the thirsty. All this is the victor's heritage, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. But as for the cowardly, the faithless, the vile, the murderers, the fornicators, the sorcerers, the idolaters, and the liars of every kind, their lot will be the second death in the lake that burns with sulfurous flames." 
Then one of the seven angels that held the seven bowls full of the seven last plagues came and spoke to me and said, Come, and I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. So the spirit, in the spirit he carried me away to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city of Jerusalem coming down from heaven from God. It shone with the glory of God. It had the radiance of some priceless jewel like jasper, clear as crystal. It had a great high wall with twelve gates, at which were twelve angels, and on the gates were inscribed the names of the twelve tribes of Israel. There were three gates to the east, three to the north, three to the south, and three to the west. The city wall had twelve foundation stones, and on them were the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. The angel who spoke with me carried a gold measuring rod to measure the city, its walls and its gates. The city was built as a square and as wide as it, as it was long. It measured by his rod twelve thousand furlongs, its length and breadth and height being equal. Its wall was one hundred and forty-four cubits high, that is, by human measurements which the angel was using. The wall was built of jasper, while the city itself was of pure gold, bright as clear glass. The foundations of the city wall were adorned with jewels of every kind, the first of the foundation stones being jasper, the second lapis lazuli, the third chalcedony, the fourth emerald, the fifth sardonyx, the sixth cornelian, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth beryl, the ninth topaz, the tenth chrysophase, the eleventh turquoise, and the twelfth amethyst. The twelve gates were the twelve pearls, each gate being made from a single pearl. The streets of the city were of pure gold like translucent glass. I saw no temple in the city, for its temple was the sovereign Lord God and the Lamb. And the city had no need for sun or moon to shine upon it, for the glory of God gave it light, and its lamp was the Lamb. By its light shall the nations walk, and the kings of the earth shall bring it into their splendour. The gates of the city shall never be shut by day, and there will be no night. The wealth and splendour of the nations shall be brought into it, but nothing unclean shall enter, nor any one whose ways are false or foul, but only those who are inscribed in the Lamb's roll of the living. Then he showed me the river of the water of life, sparkling like crystal, flowing from the throne of God, and of the Lamb down the middle of the city street. On either side of the river stood the tree of life, which yields twelve crops of fruit, one for each month of the year. The leaves of the trees serve for the healing of the nations. Every accursed thing shall disappear. The throne of God and of the Lamb will be there, and his servants shall worship him. They shall see him face to face, and bear his name on their foreheads. There shall be no more night, nor will they need the light or the lamp or the sun. For the Lord God will give them light, and they shall reign for evermore. Then he said to me, These words are trustworthy and true. The Lord God who inspires the prophets has sent his angel to show his servants what must surely shortly happen. And remember, I am coming soon. Happy is the man who heeds the words of prophecy contained in this book. It is I, John, who heard and saw these things, and when I had heard and seen them, I fell in worship at the feet of the angel who had shown them to me. But he said to me, No, not that. I am but a fellow servant with you and your brothers and the prophets and those who heed the words of this book. It is God you must worship. Then he told me, Do not seal up the words of this prophecy in this book, for in the hour of fulfilment is near. Meanwhile, let the evil doer go on doing evil, and the filthy-minded wallow in his filth, and let the good man pers persevere in his goodness, and the dedicated man be true to his dedication. Yes, I am coming soon, and bring in my recompense with me, to requite every one according to his deeds. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Happy are those who wash their robes clean, they will have the right to the tree of life and will enter by the gates of the city. Outside are dogs, sorcerers and fornicators, murderers and idolaters, and all who love and practice deceit. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to you with this testimony for the churches. 
I am the scion and offspring of David, the bright star of dawn. Come, say the spirit and the bride, come, let each hearer reply. Come forward, you who are thirsty, accept the water of life, a free gift to all who desire it. For my part, I give this warning to everyone who is listening to the words of prophecy in this book. Should anyone add to them, God will add to him the plagues described in this book. Should anyone take away from the words in this book of prophecy, God will take away from him his share in the tree of life and the holy city described in this book. He who gives his testimony speaks, Yes, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of Lord Jesus be with you all.